Good evening and welcome to SW6 Essential. Now, as you can tell by the title, Joe Sanson, first of all, how are you? I'm OK. I'm sure we'll get into it, but slightly frustrated with last night's game. But overall, I'm feeling quite a bit better about Fulham this week than last week. I'm feeling glad all over as we play Palace <laughs> in a couple of weeks. I'm not sure why I said that, but here we go. We are four points closer we were 10 points off and that seemed like a mountain to climb, an uphill task, as we uh, mentioned and titled the video a couple of, year, a couple of weeks ago now. And now I'm, I'm getting a little, a little bit giddy. Not not too giddy, but, but a little, we've got to talk about Sunday and last night. But Joe, first of all, four points gained. I know last night was horrible and frustrating and nobody enjoyed it. I don't think anyone enjoyed it. And I especially did not enjoy Ashley Barnes and James Tarkovsky. They really got under my skin. Uh, and we'll get on to that. They're living in there. They're living in there, right under Honestly, your skin, in the uh, skull. They were my first thought this morning, and that was not good. <laughs> um, Joe, let, let, let's let's talk about last night first. 1-1, yeah. one, one, we had the lead for two minutes. And I really hope, I really wish we, we didn't concede. And it was a weird goal. Let, let, let's talk about it, Joe. Yeah, um, I think we've got to say from our point of view, quite undeserved taking the lead. Um, first half, we pretty much got got battered, not in terms of loads and loads of chances, but just just bullied, really. Um, Burnley knew how to play against us. They made sure that the midfield basically became a non-event. They just passed it over us and then made it very difficult. And I've got to sort of say, well, you know what? If that's their strength, fair play to them. I'm not a fan of any of the, the play acting. Um, and like you said, Tarkovsky and Barnes were two of the main culprits for that. And it seems to be one of those things where it's um, drilled into them. Quite similar to, um, in my opinion, Bournemouth. Um, when they're in the Premier League, I always thought they were one team that always stuck in my stuck in my head for being very easily um, falling to the ground every few seconds. Start of the second half up. First few minutes, much better. Got the goal, quite a lucky goal. I think Ola Aina said he six-packed it in, so keep doing those crunches, Ola. Um, <laughs> uh, thanks to Robbie Brady for somehow air-kicking it, by the way. Um, yeah, how did you not clear that? To be honest, from there it all went wrong because my main complaint from yesterday, um, other than the overall performance, which is quite poor, um, saw a few people saying after the Lord Mayor's show, had that great performance on Sunday, what happens after that? It's always going to the standards are going to slip slightly. Um, but my main complaint from the game is our game management in that three minute spell when we were one 0 up. Because um, unlike us recently, it, it was dreadful. I was very much like the team last night for those two minutes. I was literally all over the place. I, I couldn't quite concentrate on what was happening. I was thinking about the consequences of winning, and and like we, we talked at half time about if we win, we're yeah. going to do a Zoom call and have a few drinks. So suddenly I was like. Right, I need to step up. I need to, I don't know. And then by the time I got my thoughts together, um, Ashley Barnes had, had done uh, a goal, in which you see on FIFA basically every every week. Someone tricking you down the line, and then Ariola, you, you like move your keeper to try and make the save, but Ariola just moved all the way yeah. to one side and made it really easy for Ashley Barnes to score. If you play FIFA and play foot jumps, you'll know all about that. Um, I think it was a case of Burnley doing a job on us in terms of they wouldn't let us play actually they would let us play through the thirds when we got into those positions um like just above the halfway line attacking their half their goal we had tons of space but when it came to like breaking them down couldn't find that killer pass we couldn't get in behind and it was so frustrating the ball wouldn't stick with us it reminded me a lot of the Brighton game couldn't create much at all and Burnley just like pinging these long 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 balls up over over the head of the defenders and they somehow get in behind. I just really frustrating. And yeah, their play style really, really was horrible. Um it's a point gained or two points dropped, Joe, because I'm 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 on the scale. I don't really know what to, I don't know what to think. Um yeah it's one of the first times where I'm not too sure. I think I'm leaning towards a point gained purely because I'm not sure we deserved a point. Um and I know that it's so frustrating because we did take the lead. We keep clean sheet from there. We've got three points, and that would obviously be massive. But um, I'm I'm looking at it in the overall game and just thinking, 
if we played that exact same game and we all had the same chances a hundred times, I don't think we win any of them um, because we didn't really create anything. Um, I'm glad to see us finally look quite dangerous from set pieces, by the way. I think Lookman's delivery is very good. Um, and I feel that we look dangerous. We've got a big team now. We should make use of it. And I'm glad that we've scored from a corner. Um, I think this week has been a very positive week. And I think it will be a good, good, good week as long as we win against Sheffield United. I feel that this is a must win. We'll go on to talk about it, I'm sure. Um, I said to you and a few others before this four game period um, that I wanted eight points out of uh, minimum out of Everton, Burnley, Sheffield United and Palace. We've got four. Um, I, I mean, I want at least four, but I preferably six from the next two games. I was thinking I was quite pessimistic on the last video. I predicted 1-1 one, one at Everton and I thought that was very, very optimistic. Um, I was thinking maybe a point there if we're lucky, but the three games after that are the ones to target. Um, I think we've had our two toughest games of these four on paper. Um, and I think that a win against Sheffield United makes this a great week. Yeah, I, if seven points from, from those fixtures, I mean, you'd assume we lose it at Goodison because we always do, even though I predicted a win on last week's show and um, <laughs> or episode, whatever you want to call it. And um, I was just being but optimistic, and we will come on to Sunday night because we we can't we can't not talk about it. It was a no, yeah. Um, yeah, I think the, the Sheffield United game is is massive. Um, I, I, they're gone. I mean, I, I think them and West Brom. I was looking at the table, and it's just nigh on impossible for them to get out of it honestly the only chance of a team getting out of the relegation zone right now is us um and of course newcastle play manchester united at the weekend i think they play on sunday so we play before them and that could be three points behind if we win and suddenly newcastle someone tweeted the other day i can't remember who it was newcastle in a relegation fight that they don't realize they're in you know what i mean like i think it was a monday night when they were playing chelsea someone said that they're playing like they don't, they're not in it. Like they need to now panic because there are, there is a team catch trying to catch them. And um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what, what they do against Manchester United. Joe, we have to uh, maybe a couple more points on Burnley game on the Burnley game. It wasn't a stellar performance. Ruben Loftus cheek. Now, now give me your thoughts on his performance last night. I'll be interested to hear. Um, I, I mean, I, I don't want to be too harsh, but just very nothing. Like, didn't offer us anything. And it's it's quite rare I say this recently because I thought he was excellent against West Ham. Um, and he was good against Everton. Everyone was good against Everton. I wouldn't say he was our top performer on the night. Um, I think that was Harrison Reed by a country mile. Um, but he was good and he offered us um, some driving runs again. And he played in a very attacking position and caused Everton some problems. Last night, I saw nothing from him. His passing was all over the shot. He was making the wrong decisions. Rash tackle very early on. Um, just a lot of nothing. And I was surprised he didn't get hooked earlier because I would have done. Um, I, I the, the change I would have made at half time. I was saying to you, was I would have taken Loftus-Cheek off and brought Anguissa on for him. So that at I least think. we had another body in midfield. Um, and yeah, it was really disappointing because he's been a lot better lately, but... He was our worst performer last night by by a very large margin, in my opinion. He seemed to wind everyone up. Um, and there was that instance in the first half where he got the ball in a really good position, just drag it out wide to Lutman, who's who's basically in. And he yeah. takes his time. And then the, the defender, I can't remember who it was, Long, I think, made the recovering tackle. And that was that was it. Gone. Chance gone. Very frustrating evening. Um I think his best contribution was at the end of the game for Lookman's chance, where he played that killer ball into Ivan Caballero down the line. He played it a good ball, good timing of the pass, but uh, that chance obviously went wide. Um, I've had enough of last night. Now let's talk, let's talk about some good wi a good win for Fulham, our third win of the season. Goodison Park, uh, I, I couldn't believe it, uh, and um, Josh Madger, who I think was isolated last night, couldn't quite get his mojo going. He certainly got his mojo going on Sunday. I know it's old news, but we, we, we don't win much. So it's nice to talk about, isn't it? Um, 
two goals to nil against an Everton team who lost again last night as well um, to Manchester City. Um, I, I, I think I think this was honestly our best performance of the season by a clear mile. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I mean, it's one of the best performances I can remember from a Fulham team in the Premier League for years and years. I thought it was brilliant. We battered them from start to finish, and other than Coleman hitting the post in the first half with quite a good effort, I don't ever remember feeling troubled. Um, we were so comfortable, so composed. We had so much time and space all the time, and it was just brilliant to watch. And I know part of it is going to be down to the fact that Everton were tired. Everton had an off day, fine. But even if they were on a good day, I think if we put in that performance, we'd have wiped the floor with them because we were that good. And it's a shame that we can't replicate that more often because when we're on it like that, we're nowhere near relegation fodder at all. And um, if we could have played like that on more occasions this season and had that finishing touch like we did with Madja, we'd be fine right now. I don't like the comparisons to last night's game because um, it's a completely different game. Burnley don't let you play that way um, mm. up there. It's Everton was a game with two teams that like to pass the ball around. Last night was different. Can we play like that on Saturday against a team in Sheffield United that do like to pass it, do like to create attacks, um, throw open play um, on the ground? Um, we'll wait and see, but I hope we can. And if we can perform anywhere near like we did on Sunday, on Saturday, then I would think we will beat any team, maybe other than Man City. <laughs> I, this is this is it now. I mean, this is even like that Liverpool leads, sorry, Liverpool, Man City leads, Wolves pack of four games coming up. Like back in November would have been like, oh God, this is going to be horrible. But now I'm like, yeah, I know we didn't play great last night, whatever, but I genuinely feel like, not we could go and win every all those games, but certainly, I, I and even it's been replicated. I'm not I'm not making my point here at all, but um, it's been replicated that we we have played well in the majority of the games we played this season. So I have no fear going into those sort of games, uh, especially like Liverpool's home form at the moment. It's really something quite odd, and we could really go there and, and maybe do something. I'm not sure, but um, the the way we've been playing, especially away from home this season. Fills me with so much confidence. Um, and I know last last night was an anomaly because Burnley press and they make it horrible and they literally do not let you play. But um, that Everton game was superb. They gave us space, which we completely made use of. Our Ayina down at left back was inspired because he can play there. He just hasn't played there this season. Uh, dropping Robinson was, was interesting. And I, I generally think that Ayina really, especially Sunday night, had a decent performance at left back, and I generally think he could be a left back going forward. Um, I, I, and, and obviously, Josh Madger with the two goals, Poacher's goals, and oh, we have to talk about Harrison Reed. What a player he is! Even last night, he was our best player. Yeah, I I love him so much. I mean, me and you, we say this so often. We were so excited to sign him in the summer, um, and he just seems like a gem more and more. I mean, I was worried last season. I can't lie. At the end of the um, playoff final thinking which these players can step up he was one of the ones that I thought could do it but I wasn't certain um, I know he's played in the Premier League for Southampton before I was not expecting him to step up like this I think he's been better this season than he was last year in a better league against better teams against better midfielders um, he's been inspired the last two games our best player on both nights Everton in my opinion the performance of any Fulham player so far this season and it's not close he ran the show he deserved a goal I'm glad the manager tapped it in afterwards but that shot deserved a goal he had one in the first half as well um and with him in this form um I, I back us um to, to to get more points because he seems like he's almost on a one-man mission to firstly defend everything with his life and then drive us forward from that deep position and he seems like a real leader. He's really stepped up. Yeah, I, I, it just it just comes back to the point now that we have, and I don't, I'm sure a lot of fans, I know a lot of fans, have completely fallen in love with this team, um, the manager, the setup, the the personnel. So so to go down would be absolutely heartbreaking to have that ripped away, um, unless miracles happened in the market. But FFP will just not allow that. 
Um, last week we focused on Tony Khan and we focused on that whole thing. And he was still tweeting last night. I, you know what? We shouldn't really talk about this, but it did wind me up. He still tweeted last night. Well, well that was interesting. When we beat Everton, he he gave his praise on Instagram, on his Instagram story rather than in Twitter. And I think that says more about the uh, reaction he'll get from the fans than than anything else, which, which is a shame. And, you know, I, I have obviously commented saying, you know, log off or I've said a number of things, but there are some some vile, not vile, but some nasty things said to him. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but it is worth noting. Yeah, I mean, I don't want any online abuse to anyone. Um, we spoke about it last week. Um, a, few, a few of the comments said stick to the football, which is which is fair enough. Um, and I, I, to be honest, we thought it's one of the most interesting things that happened last week. I still stand by that. I understand some people don't pay too much attention. To be honest, your life's probably a bit better for it because it leaves rent-free in my head, things like this, little things. Um, and it's what, what annoys me is just having a director of football that is not fully focused on Fulham. Um, and that's fine if you get the balance right, but um, constantly putting out wrestling stuff when there's football being played and only sort of coming out of the woodwork when there's a good result, you can see why that would infuriate people. But um, I don't ever want it to be that he is scared to post something because of the reaction, because that is saying a lot. Mm. Yeah, and that's and that's the conclusion I came to because he would normally be like pictures up of the game, thanks to all the fans, blah blah blah. But it was it was praising more of the players and the performance um, than anything I saw on the Instagram. Anyway, we're going to move on. Um, let's look ahead now. These really important two games. Sheffield United and Crystal Palace, and we have a week apart from them. And last time we had a week apart from games was West Ham to Everton, and Everton we pulled out an absolute diamond of a performance. Um, Crystal Palace are not out of trouble. I know that we're playing them in a couple of weeks, but it's worth noting that Wilfred Zaha is still out. There's a real chance there. But Sheffield United have Egan out. They're obviously bottom of the league. They're looking like they're going to go down. I wouldn't say they're playing for pride just yet, because they'll still believe, but this is huge. If we were to not win this or, or lose it, it would really, really be damaging and, and probably wouldn't seal our fate as such, but it would it would give Newcastle a bit, of, obviously, a, a, a huge advantage. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, and um, I'm not, I'm not going to try and jinx anything, but this seems like a hard fixture for Newcastle this weekend, um, where if they get anything from it, then fair play um, because I would not um, feel comfortable going to Old Trafford, even if they're not in the best of form. Um, it's not somewhere we normally have much luck. Um, so you would think on paper that the the gap will not widen this weekend, um, but it's whether we can close it. And I don't want to close it with a draw. We need to close it with a win. I think this is going to be a very hard game. Sheffield United have played well a lot of times this season in terms of their build-up play and not been able to finish their chances. Defensively, they've been very poor recently. That West Ham game I watched earlier in the week, the defending for the third goal, if that was Fulham, um, is the one that Frederick scored. If that was Fulham, I would be raging and probably making a video with you just about that goal. Um, mm. Because standing off someone in the box like that is is criminal. Um, so I'm quite worried that we're going to see a reaction from that. Um, it's going to be a tough game. I definitely don't think it's a write-off um, that we will win. Um, because we've won as many games as Sheffield United this season. Um, we have more draws. That's why we're higher in the league. We've been in more games. Um, but I'm certainly not writing off any team in the Premier League. And I'm very nervous. Um, I said before the West Brom game, this is our biggest game of the season. I've said before so many games. To be honest, at the moment, every game is. And this one, even more so because... This is a chance to close the gap before Newcastle play. It would be three points with a better goal difference, no matter what the scoreline is in our game, as long as we win. Um, mm. With um, Newcastle at home still to play. And then Newcastle then got Wolves the week after, which is not the easiest game. Um, bit of a weird one. I don't really know what way I see that going, but it's just such a big boost if we can 
um, close the gap on them psychologically. They will know we're breathing down their necks before they play, adding on pressure that currently, like you said, it doesn't seem like they're playing with that pressure on their back. Last week, they were 10 points clear. It's going to be a bit of a reality check if suddenly they're three points clear. Um, and it's just one of these things where if we don't take advantage, we will look back and rue this game. I'm looking back and ruining literally almost half <laughs> the games we played this season. And that's so frustrating. Um, the Ruben Loftus cheek chance late at Brighton, the, the Lookman penalty, the I don't even know where to begin. Like there's just so many, there's just so many um, little things that are still, uh, you have to forget about it because we have to move on. And we have to look forward to the rest of the season. Can um, I say one thing really quickly? Yeah, yeah. Just, this is going to wind you up, and I'm saying it because I know that I almost feel bad for this, but I worked it out and I want everyone to feel as annoyed as I do. Um, we're playing Newcastle away in December. Mm -hmm. um, VAR makes the correct decision and we win. Mm. The gap would currently be three points and a win against Sheffield United would take us out of the relegation zone. And that is pissing me off. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that's the one, isn't it? That's the I don't I I think if that decision if that game's played now and that decision happened, that's never a penalty. It's never. It's yeah. But yeah, yeah, we can't waste time and waste energy on 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 this because it's it's just we can't. Uh, we should talk about John Moss last night. He was terrible. I'm sorry, but the referee. I I, I know you want everything to go your way because you're supporting your team. I generally don't think he gave anything our way. And these little fouls, they weren't fouls, honestly. And Robbie Brady probably should have got sent off. And you could argue that Ruben Loftus-Cheek should have got set, set, and set, yeah, should have got sent off as well. He, he didn't. He didn't. He wasn't in my good books last night. It was old John Moss. No, and I remember the Wolves manager Nuno complained about him earlier this uh, season, oh, yes. refereeing at Turf Moor for similar things and. It mm. sort of seemed like the same thing happened. Whoever shouts louder gets the gets the foul. Ironically, I saw a few Burnley fans angry on Twitter saying that we were quite a horrible side as well. And um, I'm sure if you look at it through a neutral point of view, you might see it differently. You might think Fulham did a few bad things, Burnley did a few bad things. But I just thought some of the diving from Burnley was just comical. Um, I mean, it was so obvious that when... Tarkovsky was sort of shielding off Lookman and Lookman brushed him and he went down like he'd been shot in the head. It was just comical, right in front of the linesman, right in front of the referee, and they gave the free kick and we nearly lost the game at the very end. Um, can't say I want us to be refereed by him anytime soon, especially not in our home game against Burnley later this season. This is the problem and, and we shouldn't talk too much about referees because I want to talk about Fulham and the football, yeah, but... You watch the Champions League and you watch the Europa League, and I know that's a much a more higher and elite level of football. Well, arguably, maybe not, but um, the referees never, ever really are in the spotlight. The only time I can think of a Champions League game where the referee has taken the limelight accidentally was when Michael Oliver, who is, of course, a Premier League referee, sent off Gigi Buffon in that game against Real Madrid in the last minute, and then Ronaldo scored the penalty to send uh, Real Madrid through. That was a couple of years ago. But the refereeing standard is, is usually pretty good. And when it comes to VAR, there's no dramas. So what it leads me to believe and think is that it's not a uh, a refereeing problem. Well, it is a refereeing problem in the Premier League, but it's down to their egos. These refs, uh, Mike Dean the other day against, against West Ham and um, uh, what's his face? Graham Scott against Newcastle when he was mocking Lamina by putting his hand... Like, that's the bad one for me. That was yeah, the worst is, by far. And then, and then, and then last night, or was it the night before, Ipswich Town against Northampton? That the referee reacts to a player, and I, I, I maybe don't blame him for that. I, do, I don't know anything really about it, but I just think that the referees in this Premier League, I think there's two or three very, very good referees, and that is Anthony Taylor, Michael Oliver. I can't think of another one, but but I just I really have an issue with the Premier League's uh, referees. And they, of course, control VAR as well. And, uh, yeah, it's just it's just something that I thought about a lot recently. Yeah, I um, agree with everything you said. Refereeing is quite poor in England overall. We were complaining about this in the Championship. I still mm. maintain it was worse in the Championship, um, but it's not much better in the step up. Um, 
even with VAR helping them, so many mistakes. And um, I personally still believe the problem is not VAR, it's the way VAR is being used mm. and the people we have using it. And sadly, that is our group of referees who I don't think are up to much. What can you do? What can you do? Uh, Joe, um, let, let's leave it there. I, I, I suppose there's only so much you can talk about the Sunday's game. It's been covered on the podcast, Full Time Live and, and various other outlets. Um, last night was just so miserable that I just don't really want to spend too much time talking about it. Um, unless you have anything else to say on the matter, I just think it was, you know, one of those classic one ones. We probably should have defended our lead a bit better. Yeah, I, I think shout outs to a few players because, firstly, the defence as a whole for the goal we conceded were were terrible. But other than that, I thought really stood up to Burnley and didn't allow ourselves to be bullied in that second half. We sort of had our backs against the wall and I thought they coped with it really well, actually. Um, I thought Anguissa looked good when he came on at the end. I thought he offered us something more going forward, driving runs. And I wouldn't be surprised if he started against Sheffield United. Um, and I also was quite impressed with um, what well, Madger, first of all. Again, I thought he was very isolated, but what he did do, um, I thought was all good. His hold-up play, his touches, the pass through to Lookman at the very end. And the last shout-out, I think, from me is to, um, to Cavalero because... When he came on, I thought he looked very dangerous. And I actually personally think he's earned himself a starting spot um, against Sheffield United um, because I think there was a lot of players that didn't perform yesterday and I don't see why he shouldn't start with his work rate. Also, last last thing, Ariola's sort of um, push in the Ooh, first that half. Big. That was huge. Exceptional goalkeeping. Very brave. Because mm. that, that could have... I mean, that was... I don't even know what the XG data on that sort of chance is, but it was yeah. almost guaranteed goal. Um, uh, just finally, uh, players who really annoyed me last night, Burnley, Rodriguez, don't know why he's so mouthy. Same with Ashley Barnes. He's got a very, very annoying face. Uh, that's a little bit rude, but I, it's just one of those things. James Harkowski, former Brentford player, I'm never really going to like him anyway. Uh, just, just didn't like his whole attitude. Uh, and Robbie Brady, yeah. Uh, came on, did nothing, came off again, um, got a yellow card. Um, and on the Fulham side, Mario Lamina, I don't think should start on Saturday. I think Anguisa comes in for him. Um, and maybe Cav, maybe Cav starts for Bobby Decord over Reed. But I, w- I was I was sad to see Bobby Decord over Reed come off last night because um, he wasn't playing in his, that, that wing back position and he was getting the ball a lot. Um, in space, but he just just couldn't find the pass, couldn't find that cutting edge. And this is where we're really missing Tom Kearney. Yeah, and hopefully he's back soon because I feel that the West Ham game is a very good example of a game where I thought we needed Tom Kearney just for the final ball. Um, I think yesterday was the same. We had very rare attacks, um, but when we did, the final ball was off. And I think someone like Tom Kearney could have really helped us out there. I thought Loftus-Cheek would have been the player to step up again, but um, he wasn't last night. And so I wouldn't be surprised, actually, if Cavalero even came in for for Loftus-Cheek with where he was playing yesterday, sort of on that right wing. Um, if Loftus-Cheek starts against Sheffield United, um, which I wouldn't be against if he's played centrally. Um, mm. For me, it's either he's played centrally or he doesn't start at all. Um, I don't think there's any in between. I think if he plays centrally, he plays quite well normally. If he plays on the wing... Um, not for me. Final thoughts, final question. Let's get your score prediction for Saturday night against Sheffield United. Um, Saturday night, I think it's going to be tough. Um, I've got the same sort of feelings that I had before that West Brom game at home earlier in the season when we hadn't won, where I was very, very nervous and both teams needed to win. We need to win to close the gap. Sheffield United need to win to have any chance of staying up. Um, and we found home games tough. So I think it's going to be really hard, but I back us to get three points. Um, and I think we're going to win 2-1. That's interesting because we think about what you just said. Sheffield United have no reason to play for a draw now. They have to win yeah. basically every game, especially with the teams around them. Yeah. I, I genuinely feel like it will finish a draw just because of the way the game will go. And um, I want to say we're going to win. I think we can win. I just think that... The, the way the whole thing is just going to pan out is just going to be a draw, probably 1-1 or something, which is really frustrating. But um, 
I will I will back us to win. I just really hope it's not a draw because it suits absolutely nobody, Joe. Yeah, yeah. And I will be furious if, for example, it's level um, with 10, 15 minutes to play and we are not giving it absolutely anything. Because I really think this is this 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 spell now is make or break. If we want to stay in this league, we've got to win these games. And if we don't win on Saturday, it probably means that in turn we've got to go to somewhere like Villa Park or um, Old Trafford or the Emirates and come away with three points just to get back on track. And um, look, we, we've got to win. We've got to win. I, I can see us going to a Villa Park or a St Mary's and getting something. I generally, do, if we can win at Goodison and King Power, and the way we play away from it, I, I, I think we have a chance if Josh Major stays fit. Uh, anyway, that has been that's been your lot this week. Um, it's sort of frustrating because we kind of want to get excited, but then we kind of don't want to get excited because it could just yeah. be horrible. Um, but look, if we win on Saturday, regardless of what Newcastle do before their game, we are three points behind. So even if they get a point, it's just four. Well, it's just four points, and, and there's a chance that we go to Palace, and then we go to Anfield, we host City. We've got to, we've got to be within that. Imagine if we're level on points going into that run of games. That'd be great. Amazing. Yeah, they, 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 we said before this is the group of games where we have to close the gap. If you can close it completely. That's ideal. We've got to be, and I don't want it to come down to the last game, we've got to be within three points of Newcastle going into the last game. Um, or we're done, we're relegated. Um, I can't see any other team other than Newcastle or us filling that last place. So we've got to give it everything. Of course, there's that massive game on Monday night as well between Crystal Palace and Brighton. Two teams who I'm not ruling out. I think Brighton are probably the more likely to get out of it, so even then, maybe a Brighton win suits us better. You, you just never know. We'll, we'll, we'll cross the bridge when we come to it, Joe. Yeah, I think I think Brighton will be fine. I think Palace are sort of falling like a stone, but there's a bit too much of a gap for them to get truly worried. And I just really hope that when we play them, Zaha's not back because I think they're a completely different team. And mm. I'm really annoyed that when we played them earlier in the season, they had Zaha. He was the difference. He assisted the first goal, scored the second. And without him, I think we would have won that game, let alone drawn it, because we were all over them and he was the difference. Um, it's going to be tough. Sorry, I, I said we'd wrap up. I do it every week, but I just forgot about something <laughs> I mean, that happened last night. Scott Parker almost got himself sent off on the touchline. Oh, and yes. Off. Now, he was furious at something. I'm not really sure what. I think it was to do with just the interaction of the Burnley players and the way they were treating our players. I'm not sure, but I love to see that passion, but be careful, mate, because we don't want you on the sidelines. Yeah, be careful. Also, one thing I found a bit strange, and I am biased in saying this, but Dyke shouted the whole game about every little thing, berating the ref, berating the linesman. The throw wasn't there. It was there. Literally, who cares? And then Scott Parker said one thing, and it must have been very strongly worded and probably quite rude um, to get that reaction. But I did find it interesting that Deitch never, ever, ever, no one will ever say a word to him because he's a breath of fresh air and he's so lovely. Um, personally, I don't like Sean Deitch. Um, oh, it's, an unpopular, okay. it's, an unpopular, it's an unpopular opinion I have. I don't really want to get into it right now because I think it's a bit, we've been wrapping up for about 10 minutes. But yeah. um I don't like Sean Dyche. Um, I don't like his style of football. I understand why he has to do it, and it's very effective. Um, but I don't like him. I don't like his teams. I don't like his team. I like Dyche for some reason. If he managed England, I'd be really happy. I just He seems like a likeable guy. He just feels like he has to do what he has to do to get out of these players. Like, I'm sure he's a nice guy. You've seen it in press conferences. Scott Parker last night looked like a, uh, a school child being told off by the teacher. It was, yeah, it was quite, yeah. quite amusing. Um, Joe, as always, I always say, let's wrap it up. And we've been battering on for another five, whatever minutes. But uh, let's leave it there. Saturday night is a huge one. We'll see you next Thursday uh, to preview the Palace game. That's going to be massive as well. Uh, and yeah, just try and keep the spirit up. And um, yeah, come on Fulham and uh, have a good weekend. <laughs>